Spencer is so happy. Good job. Baby! From the last dive. Hey. Awesome, man. Good work. Okay, so the Nipisquit Mi'kmaq Trail, if you're familiar with it or not, this is an, a world-renowned trail network that spans from Mount Carlton in northern New Brunswick all the way down the Nipisquit River uh, where it dumps into the Bay de Chaleur in the city of Bathurst. So it's 150 kilometers and I had set a goal about 10 months ago, been thinking about it for a couple years and then about 10 months ago I said, okay, I really, really wanna try to uh, do this entire trail network in one sleepless push. Now, uh, whenever I told people the last couple months what I was doing or if I posted it online, the, the general response was, why? Why would you even set a goal like that? People would just kind of look at me like I had two heads, uh, a bit baffled. And, and I guess my, my best answer to that is, why not? Um, I think our bodies and our brains are built to do hard things. I think it's part of our evolutionary history. We, we all have something primitive within us that goes back thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. And, and this was just a way to lean into, see how far I could push myself and see where the limits were. And let me tell you, boy oh boy, did I ever test my limits on this run. Um, way beyond what I anticipated. Um, I was greatly humbled. And, um, and yeah, why don't you come on along for the adventure on the road to 150. Hey, we'll see you guys tomorrow night, okay? It is go time. The weather is beautiful up here in Mount Carleton. Road to 150. We made it to 150. Now we need to make it to zero. Yes, that is snow. Hopefully, that's the only stuff we see. Snow on the trail, northern New Brunswick. Okay, pretty monumental milestone. We are. Five kilometers in. And 145 to go. <laughs> Last 500 meters. <laughs> Danny's running us out. Getting ready for the next leg. That's our adventure, is still happy. <laughs> and I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> there he is. Good job, Dan. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Cha-cha! Okay. <laughs> okay, leg one in the books. Switching out Adam for the Rice King. And uh, 18K, we're going to meet this guy here, Recon Robbie. They own at Indian <laughs> Falls Depot. Have fun, boys. Yeah. Another magical trail marker, 115. Dan, how you feeling? Awesome. Good top. <gasps> There's a rage fire. fire. <laughs> Smells good. Baby! Hey, buddy. Checkpoint number two, Robert Recon. <laughs> and we're about 45K. So far, so good. Couple dips in the last section mentally, but just fueling and water and uh, feeling good. We'll be finishing this one off in the dark. And uh, then we're approaching the halfway point. Power on. It's official. I am one third of the way done. Which, mentally, is great, but it also means I have two thirds left. But, forward motion is the plan. Kylie, you got some uh, words of encouragement for your dad? Yeah, I hope he makes it the whole way. 
I hope he makes it the whole way too. You got any words of encouragement for him? Um, he can do it. <laughs> That's pretty good. What are you gonna say to him when he gets here? Um, that he's halfway there. He's halfway there. That's right. You're almost there, brother. Oh. <laughs> Doing great. A little less zip than the last time. Hey, that's okay. There's more <laughs> zip to come. <laughs> hey, Dan, hey, good job. Do you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys did great too. Yeah. <laughs> you can take mine. <laughs> you that guy's here. We're going to call this little segment the intermission in this little documentary that I'm creating. Let me tell you, when I came up that hill to He Steel, and everybody's cheering and my kids are, my two oldest kids are there, my wife's there. Um, I have my next running partner is there with his wife and there's just, everybody's super positive and there was such a incongruence between where they were and where I was. And I had spent the last two hours of the hike into He Steel. Um, I was not in a good spot. So I uh, went back to where we we're all gathering. I was warming up in the truck for a bit and I said, guys, I said, I'm done. I totally appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, thanks to all of you, and I, and I appreciate the positivity. And I know you're gonna probably tell me, you know, to keep going, and that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, but I've been thinking about this seriously for the last hour or two, and um, I just, I don't got anything left. It, it beat me, and I'm okay with that. And I'm not gonna lie, I was, I was looking forward to some sympathy. I think I was just expecting people to go, Oh, you know, Fletch, you know, you pushed, you gave it a good run and let's pack her up and let's go, let's head back home and get you some sleep. And that was the opposite. And at the time it actually frustrated me and I got a little annoyed because everybody was, it's almost like they didn't even hear me. They just, uh, they're like, okay, well, we're going to change the next checkpoint. And they started pulling out maps and, and they just, I just kind of sat there and I was like, so I, I had to say it again. I said, guys, I said, I, I absolutely appreciate, and I, and I know this is what you're supposed to do. I said, but I'm out. I'm completely out. I've thought about this for quite a while. And uh, once again, it was just on deaf ears. But then suddenly the tide started to turn a little bit. And I'm not saying I felt great, but I started to at least feel a little bit of upward momentum. And that's when everything turned. The energy started lifting up even more from my crew. And I just started to feel a little bit better. I do think it was mainly just time. My appetite came back, so I got some food. I started to come around, and I call it the resurrection, obviously, you know, loosely. But uh, I felt like I was coming back to life. And by the time I started and got out of the truck, I was feeling really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Hey. You got her, buddy. Woo! How do you? Hey, baby. See you later. Good job. Okay, I tried to duck out twice now, and this may go on social media, so I can't say anything expert in these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Would not let me duck out. No, they wouldn't. That's right. They shamed me and peer pressured me into ten, nine more kilometers, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna get to triple digits, we're gonna get to the 100 marker, and I'm quite confident that I'm gonna call her a day. Yeah. Onward, upward, and outward. See you at whatever the place is. Kilometer 50. We'll call <laughs> you know, buddy. Kilometer 50, buddy. All right. Okay, boys. Good luck, this. man. Buddy. Good luck, buddy. You got her. Really? Fucking love you, buddy. Right. Fucking got her. You got her. You got her, man. Okay. I'm fucking proud of you. Okay. You too, Ryan. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's a little wider. See you soon, boys. You look good. You look great, buddy. 100 kilometers is right there, man. <laughs> <laughs>
You are fucking Scott there. You just hit the oh, you did it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. The gold's still fast. <laughs> Where they all got there. Very gentle. Awesome, man. Good work. Oh. What do you got to say, Fletch? Well, <laughs> uh, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> oh, and then I did 29 more. <laughs> You're here, buddy. <laughs> and then his friends made him keep going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrible You're friends. That turned very loosely. <laughs> okay, so I'm a week out from doing uh, this attempt and accomplishing 100 kilometers, which I am very happy with. Yes, 150 was the goal, um, but I did 29 more kilometers than I really thought. At that point, when I hit that wall at He Steel, I was out. That was a 71 kilometer marker. Um, I pushed on for another 29, and it was slow. It was slow hiking, walking, um, but I picked away at it, and I got to that 100 kilometer marker. And, I've had a lot of time now to look back and reflect on this journey and what are some of the things that I've taken away from it. Um, so the first big thing, and I'll kind of just go over three or four big things. Um, one, we're born to do hard things. I've always believed this mentally and physically. I think our modern existence has the narrative and just the structure of how we're set up. Is, is doesn't allow a lot of us to do hard things. We're so automated with our Amazon existence, how we get acquire our food. A lot of things are pretty easy. Um, so this really, this was just confirming something I've already known. We're born to do hard things and that we can push through. And this leads into my next one, is we can, we can do these hard things when we have a support network. Life is meant to be supported. We're a tribal species. This is something I'm very fascinated with as a mental health professional. Um, and, and I got to really experience this in this adventure that I went on. And really, I set out to do this to really accomplish a physical goal and maybe push myself mentally. But what I came away from it was just how supportive my support crew and my family, everybody wanted me to succeed so bad. My success was their success. And it was such a cool experience. And I mean, it brought me to tears that night after I got home and had a nap in the afternoon and just looked back and I was like, you know, they, they, they wanted me to be successful. They knew I'd work really hard for this and they knew I wouldn't be happy at 71 kilometers and I w wouldn't be happy at 91 kilometers. And just the support that I got from this crew um, was just, it was through the roof. And that is one of the biggest things I'll look back on um, what in years to come is that that support I had and the love that I got from my crew. Third, third big takeaway that I from this uh, this is more the physical training piece. <clears throat> I was uh, undertrained and overweight. Simply put, um, <clears throat> I might have been a little bit delusional going into it. I had trained pretty hard and I'd done some pretty big runs before leading up to it, um, the months leading up to it really. But I'm 215 pounds as I'm sitting here right now, and during the run I might have been even a bit heavier. Um, carb loading the week before. I'm not a tall guy either, so that's a lot of weight um, to carry around through the woods. And when I had done the ultra way back, uh, the one I did way back years ago, that was 125K, I was 15 or 20 pounds lighter, and that makes a big difference. So that one, and, and I think I was probably a bit under trained. The terrain was incredibly difficult, that middle 50 kilometers. I knew this going in. Um, but I think I, I, when I do this again, not if, um, I need to be 15 to 20 pounds lighter, absolutely, before I'll even consider doing it. And I need to be more trained. I need to have that endurance foundation um, even stronger, be able to run faster and run longer, um, and also handle very rough terrain without it beating me up mentally and physically. And my, my fourth big takeaway, and this is it, um, kind of just a funny one, but. I think in life, in a lot of aspects, is sometimes we need a mulligan, right? I'm not a golfer, but I like the term, is sometimes we we need that chance to just mess up, and uh, and that's perfectly fine. And going into this adventure, um, I had set the goal, and I'd said this to lots of people, yes, I, I truly thought I was going to finish the 150, and I was training as if I was going to, but I also would say on the other side of my mouth, 
that um, I'm setting this bar really high and um, you know, I'm 38 years old. I only gave myself five months to train, and before that, I was pretty sedentary. Um, I set the goal knowing that there's a high probability I wasn't going to finish, and I was okay with that. And in fact, that actually sparked me um, to work even harder, and I'm okay with that. So this was my mulligan, and I said earlier, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, I am going to come back fitter, faster, leaner, and meaner next year or the year after. And when the time is ready, and if it takes two years to get there, I will come back and I will complete the 150. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind, I will complete it, the whole thing, um, but I need to take some things away from this experience, be happy with what I did accomplish, but need to put some more work in and work not only harder, but gotta work a little bit smarter, dial in the nutrition, get the body weight down, um, and maybe look a bit more like an actual endurance athlete. Um, so stay tuned for the redemption run coming in the next year or two. Can't wait to share the experience with all of you. Thanks for those of you who tune into this. Bye.